Tacoma rear speaker replacement. Time to put some kickers in. Good morning, everybody. How are you? today pretty good here and today i'm going to be replacing the rear speakers in the tacoma with these new 300 watt kicker speakers now we're going to see if it makes any difference at all i do have kicker speakers everywhere else tweeters and the front speakers so i thought we got to go ahead and replace the rears right so i'm going to show you guys how to do that let's get started first of all you have to remove the door card now, to do that, there's a screw behind uh, the door handle. Let me point you down a little here. There's a screw behind the door handle right here, and then there's a screw down here in the little pull area on the door, and then you have to remove this little pen-like thing right over here. So, let's do that. We'll start off, I guess, uh, right down here in the door handle. You have to pop out the little carpeted piece that's down here first. That just comes right out, it's not stuck in there or anything. Put that in the beginnings of our parts pile down there. Uh, again, just a Phillips head screw, so let's go ahead, we'll pull that out. Okay, there's the screw. Set that aside. Keep all this stuff together. Then we have to pop this little cover out that's right here in the door handle area. I'm um, just gonna use a little trim tool to Term removal tool that is to try to get behind it it should just pop right out in theory let's do it nice and gently otherwise it'll go flying it's just held in by some little friction or pressure like tabs on there then as I mentioned there is a screw right behind here and go ahead and remove that there you go just like that then you want to push in over here on this little pin right here right in the middle there's a little push area you can see just use your Phillips head screwdriver just push that in and you might have heard the little pop there that releases it sometimes they'll pop there you go they'll just pull right out there you go and there's a little bit of a close-up if the camera will focus on the uh, actual area you push in set that aside and now we should uh, be to the next part and that is I was gonna say pull the card off, but not yet first You have to remove the control panel here for the the window um, To do that you just want to get on the edge underneath right here and be careful when you do that because I have found that the material uh, making up this Console here is pretty fragile and it can chip or scratch. So again plastic pry tool I would probably rarely ever use a metal pry tool, to be honest. Um, again, you just kind of want to work under the edge. Hopefully your tool is sharp. Mine's been kind of dulled for use. But it does pull up a little. You might have, There you go. You heard a pop there. There you go. Just gently working it from this area here to the back. There we go. And I think we're okay. We'll take a look at it in a minute. But right here is the little connector that I was talking about. Uh, you need to locate where the little push area is. And it's on the back side, it looks like. Back here towards the back. You should be able to just push that in uh, and pull the top off. That's the general idea. Just like that. And it just pulls right off. The little push area is right here on the back, like I mentioned. Now, let's make sure we didn't break anything. And there really are only a couple of little push tabs, one here and one here. Make sure these stay on the unit so that when you put it back in, you're pushing it back the correct way. And then some little pressure areas around the edge and you can see none of those broke, so we're golden. There are gonna be some cables behind the door handle here, so you wanna make sure when you pull this off uh, that you don't damage those. So we're going to start up here on the edge. That seems to be the easiest place to start, I think. And there should be push tabs behind the actual panel here on the door. So we're actually going to use a trim tool. Uh, again, trying to make sure that I do not break any of the push tabs behind it there. Helps to have fingernails too. 
but we should be able to just get behind there as I get a good area to get behind. Oh, well there. <laughs> it just pops right out. But now I'm going to get down to the bottom and pull out because that's where the other pens are. And something fell out. You can see right here, and this is what I'm talking about. It just came out. It did not break. So I'll show you where that goes here in a minute. We should almost be able to pull this out, I think. Yeah, there's another one there. And I think that's it. I think we're, we're loosey-goosey now. So I should be able to lift up and pull this off, ideally. Huh? All right, just that easy. So now, we do have these cables to mess with here in the back. And there's two ways to do this. Let me pull you guys in a little. There's two ways to do this. You can actually remove the door handle from the card itself, which is what I'm probably going to do. Or you can remove the cables uh, from the holders that are inside here. They just kind of push forward and pull out and actually if you keep track of which one is which there's white on the top and I'm saying this for my own benefit too, but there's white on the top and green on the bottom. Um, you can remove those cables, but I do feel the door handle kind of pulling out of there itself. I don't think I want to remove the door handle in this case. So I think what I'm going to do is just remove the cables. And that is so simple to do. And I'll show you that in just a second how that works. Just like that. On the back of the door, you have the door handle here. And here's these little areas I'm talking about. The cables just go in through a little holder and push back and kind of clamp down. That's it. Very easy to do. Some people uh, do remove the actual handle itself. I'm not a big fan of doing that because I don't want to misalign it or anything when I put it back in. So for me, it's just as easy to remove those cables and make sure that you put the right ones back in the right slot. Otherwise, it won't work. And that, of course, again, is white on the top, green on the bottom. One more thing, that little hook or piece that came off actually came off right here at the top. It just pushes in through here and slides into this slot. So we'll go ahead and put that back in just like that. Okay, time to remove the speaker now. Uh, first, you want to remove this little connector right here, and on this side, which is towards the front of the door, I guess, there's a little push pin type thing. You push in, and it should just pull right up, and then it just pulls right out like you can see right there, and then these are 10 millimeter bolts. There are three, one here, one here, and one down here. We're going to start at the bottom, and I'm going to use a drill because it just makes things quicker. Hopefully the speaker doesn't fall out. There we go. You should be able to just kind of push up a little and pull out, I believe. Famous last words, right? Ah, that's it. Just pulls out like so. Okay, we got all our pieces and parts laying here. First of all, let's take a look at the new speaker uh, as compared to the old speaker. Right here is the magnet on the back of this one, and right there is. I don't know, is there a magnet there? I don't know. But you can see there's a heck of a difference in weight wise. I wouldn't say they're hugely heavier, the kickers, uh, but definitely heavier than the stock. Um, but not too bad. So anyway, we have to go ahead now and get this fastened on to the holder, the retainer, uh, the big gasket, whatever you want to call this thing, uh, to go ahead and mount it in. So we're gonna do that next. First thing that we're gonna do with this bracket so we're going to remove these two outside arms, if you will, because we don't need them and why have them in the way? It's these three here that connect into the existing uh, hole or screws, I guess, to mount the speaker. So I'm going to just take a pair of wire snippers and just cut these off. And I will say they must know this going in because there's a little line right here. I'm not sure if you can see it uh, where you would cut these off. And then that allows me to just go ahead and take it off like so, no big deal. Okay, another thing that you might notice, on the bracket that you get, it's kind of a universal bracket, right? I mean, we already cut off these little tabs at the edges that we didn't need. But also around the inside, there are several tabs. And we do need to remove those because if you look, when you set the speaker inside, 
hard to tell. Uh, well, there you can see. The tabs stop it from actually seating flush around the speaker. I do need to quickly remove all of those tabs around the edge of both of the uh, brackets there so that we can fit the speaker in flushly. Okay, I did want to show you guys, there are little slits around the edge of these tabs because they are designed to be removed if you don't need them. And I've seen a lot of people use wire cutters or some kind of cutting tool to cut these. You do not need to do that. Just grab yourself a pair of pliers, grab it right on the edge like so, and then just push down. And they come right off, just like that. Uh, so it's pretty simple to do, and I wouldn't cut them. You'll cause yourself more problems doing that, I think. Just uh, grab them with a pair of pliers and push down. And that's it. That's all you have to do. So we've got all these removed. I'll go ahead and do the other one, and then we'll do the next step. Okay, you can see it fits inside the holder now. The holes in the speaker actually line up with the holes in the bracket to screw into. They do provide screws for that. So we're going to do it this way, utilizing uh, the holes that they have because they line up nicely. And it's pretty much centered, or will be centered, in the slot or hole inside the door. Okay, we got everything bolted on, screwed on. You guys can see there, four screws per bracket. They only give you enough for four per bracket, but that's probably enough. So now we need to go ahead, and I'm using the cover as protection for the front of the speaker. It won't be on in the truck. Uh, but we need to go ahead and connect the harness to the speaker. Um, it comes in the kit from Crutchfield. By the way, this came from Crutchfield. Um, they give you the kit that fits your truck and it just needs to fit through the hole right up here on the top this hole so we got to feed it through there and then we'll connect the connectors on you can't get it wrong because they only fit one way for different size connections so pretty easy to do we'll go ahead and feed that through the top and then we'll get it in the truck there you go okay time to mount the speaker let's go ahead no more protective cover Go ahead and get it in. See, we've got the wires right there where they're supposed to be. That's awesome. You love it when the wires line up where they're supposed to be, right? Okay, all we should have to do now is put the bolts back in. And fortunately, they do line up, so we don't need to do anything crazy there. Now, let's just go ahead. We should be able to just plug in. There's the snap. All right, we've got it all in there, all mounted. You guys can see there. I did put just a little bit of rubber weather stripping. It's actually foam weather stripping around the connector for no other reason than to, if it does impact anything, we're not gonna get any noise. The wire's already wrapped and I did put just a little square of foam right here for kicks in case that wire rides on it, just to avoid any kind of vibration sound. But, you know, if it doesn't work, Nothing, uh, nothing lost. Pretty simple. I did put a little piece of electrical tape around there to hold it. That's it. So now I need to go over there and do the other one. And then I'll test it for sound, make sure everything works before I put the cards back on and all that good stuff. And then uh, we'll button it up. So what do I think of the speakers? Um, let me tell you, first of all, they add sound, obviously they're speakers, but it is not overwhelming. They kind of add a little more depth, I guess, to the, to the sound system. Um, if you're looking for something earth shattering, you're not gonna find it with these speakers. That's the tweeter mod. So far in my experience of the three sets that I've replaced, the tweeters make the biggest difference. The other ones are just like kind of support, if you will, because I've done the front kickers and now the rear kickers. So if I have any recommendation to you and you're looking to improve the sound without spending a bunch of money or doing anything else, replace the tweeters. That's probably all you really need to do. You just get a little bit more depth out of these other speakers. Anyway, leave a comment. Let me know if you put these kickers in other than the tweeters. Did you notice some big difference? I'd be curious to know. Also, real quick, 
I have two additional channels, Rob Motive JT, all about my 2020 Jeep Gladiator. And Rob Motive Civic, about my experiences with the Honda Civic Type R and the Honda Civic Sport Hatchback. Check them out, and if you like them, why not subscribe? Don't forget to click that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. And do me a favor, smash that subscribe button on the way out. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.